Hello, my name is Paul Franzon. I'm the Director of Graduate Programs in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at North Carolina State University. This presentation is about why you should go to grad school, and furthermore, why you should come to North Carolina State University. Electrical and Computer Engineering is quite unique amongst the engineering disciplines in that most engineers in this area have some level of graduate education. This is due to the nature of the products we design, which acquire sophisticated design and analysis skills. This, take, this table is taken from Electronic Design Magazine in their 2015 salary survey and shows the highest education level reported by engineers who took the survey. As you can see, over half the engineers in the United States reported having some level of graduate studies under their belt. 30% reported having a master's degree, and 10% reported having a doctoral degree. Next, a little bit about these degrees. A master's degree generally requires 10 graduate level courses beyond the bachelor's. In the bachelor's degree, you probably took a handful of electives of an advanced nature. In a master's program, all of these 10 courses are at or beyond the level of those electives. There are a few constraints on the master's degree in terms of the courses that you have to take. In addition, most master's degree holders have also participated in a research project or advanced development project through their courses or by taking a thesis. A master's degree generally takes 18 months full-time or four to five years part-time. A doctorate or a doctor of philosophy is an advanced research degree. It requires completing an advanced research project with a degree of novelty and originality, as well as completing the requirement for the master's degree. It generally takes three to four years beyond the master's requirements. However, that time is more like study, more like work than study. You work in a lab, you have a desk, you have regular hours, you have a peer group and you have an advisor who is helping you towards this degree. Furthermore, most students get paid a stipend and have their tuition covered while they're doing a PhD. So let's talk in general about why go to graduate school and the opportunities it creates. First, during and after your graduate degree, you get to work on many advanced technologies. Second, that degree will dramatically increase your earning potential. And third, you'll open many doors to interesting and challenging assignments uh, within your career. Let's look at the advanced technology set. At North Carolina State University, we have over 90 graduate courses within our department. You can also take courses outside the department. We also have over 200 funded research projects in our department or associated with our centers. These courses and projects run the gamut of the technologies on this page and beyond. Areas of active coursework and projects include advanced chip design, autonomous systems, signal processing, machine learning, computer architecture, communications and networking, wearable electronics, embedded systems, the smart grid, renewable energy and wide band gap circuits, military security and aerospace applications, and the enabling technologies including solid state devices, semiconductors, nanotechnology, photonics, and packaging. Next, pay. This is also taken from Electronic Design Magazine. As you can see, as you go from a bachelor's degree through a master's degree and onto a doctoral degree, the average pay reported by the respondents goes up significantly. However, the next page will probably interest you more. What I've plotted here are the reported starting salaries of graduates from our department. I've plotted the medium and 25th and 75th percentiles for bachelor's and master's graduates, and the entire range for master's and PhDs. As you go from a bachelor's degree to a master's degree, your first year's salary goes up dramatically. 
And there is a further step as you go from a master's degree to a PhD degree, though not as dramatic a one. In all, I would suggest to you that if you have the capability and interest in doing a graduate degree and you don't, you are making a million dollar mistake. That is because your lifetime earnings will be decreased by over $1 million compared with your true potential. Many of you are probably interested in climbing the technical ladder. What I've plotted here is data reported by Intel on the most advanced degree held by the senior fellows and fellows within the company. These are the highest technical ranks in Intel and in fact are the highest technical ranks in most companies. As you can see, these high technical ranks are very heavily dominated by advanced degree holders. The reason for this is quite simple. After completing a PhD degree in particular, you'll be expected to be able to take on difficult and complex assignments and solve them. As you demonstrate your ability to do so, you'll be offered even more complex assignments and given greater autonomy, something which engineers often seek. Eventually, you'll do something that makes a big impact on your company. This is what will zoom you up the technical ladder and the climb is worth it. A senior fellow is paid the same as a senior vice president and fellows are paid the same as vice presidents. At NC State, we have graduate degrees in these areas. We have eight master's degrees, computer engineering, computer networking, electrical engineering, and electrical power systems engineering. And we have online versions of each of those degrees. Most of our courses are offered to both residential students and online students. We offer PhD degrees in computer engineering and electrical engineering. This slide summarizes the pathway through to these degrees. First of all, you can try out a graduate class and also shows your potential through what we call non-degree studies. You can attend classes or take them online and these classes can be transferred to a degree. Non-degree studies doesn't require admission and anyone with a bachelor's degree can take courses this way. However, at some point, you'll probably want to be formally admitted to one of our degrees. There are several paths through the master's degree. For our own undergraduates at NC State, you can take the Accelerated Bachelor's Master's Program, or ABM program. This adds 12 months to your four-year degree. So in five years, you get both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. For students from outside or NC State students not taking this route, if you already have a bachelor's degree, you can be admitted directly to the full-time or part-time master's. Full-time master's degree generally takes 18 months. Sometimes it takes 24, but that's the exception. A number of students also take the degree part-time by either attending classes on campus or taking classes online through engineering online. Usually, the employer pays the tuition and sometimes gives time off for pursuit of a master's degree. The Doctor of Philosophy generally requires three years of full-time work beyond the requirements for masters. There are two ways of taking a PhD degree. You can be directly entered as a PhD student from your bachelor's. This means you'll still take 10 courses as well as do the research project. A lot of students who take this pathway also get what we call a master's on route. I.e. once you've completed 10 appropriate courses, you can be awarded the master's while continuing the PhD. On the other hand, many students do get a master's degree first before applying or transferring to the PhD program. My advice is if you want a PhD, take the direct entry route. This integrates you with an advisor and a research topic earlier in the process and still gives you the option of getting a master's on route. So why do a graduate degree with a master's or PhD in our department 
and North Carolina State University. As I said before, we have over 90 courses and over 200 research projects. We also provide many experiences outside of the technical classrooms. These include training in job hunting skills, presentation skills, writing skills, entrepreneurship, preparing to be a professor, and so forth. We have 60 internationally known faculty from amongst whom you are quite likely to find a suitable advisor. We are also very well resourced with ample equipment, funding, etc. In terms of research expenditures, we ranked 10th in the country overall in 2016 and reported over $40 million in research funding spent that year. We're the third largest graduate program in the country. As a result of our technical vitality and the number of students in our department, over 130 employers recruit here. This includes all the name brand employers that you might be familiar with, such as Apple, Intel, Qualcomm, Google, and so forth. Also, one particular advantage that North Carolina State University has is the proximity to a very large local set of engineering companies in Research Triangle Park. This leads to opportunities for internships, co-ops, and part-time work. Here are some web links to graduate and research project pages in our department, as well as the grad school link. I've also provided links to engineering online and non-degree studies, as well as our program and my emails. Finally, on this slide, I'll give you some links to some background information. You can see I've already used information from Electronic Design Magazine, and particularly their salary survey. You'll also find the IEEE Career site has a lot of good information, including a very detailed salary calculator. Finally, I thank you for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you as a graduate student in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at North Carolina State University.